at the end of the last video I was saying that I thought this stator the generator coils had had it and we've had quite a lot of comments on that video from Noakes Walker and Zantaf saying do you really think so amongst other people and let's just have another look there's large areas that have been scraped away and if you look there that's a, a rotary scrape as it were as if something scraped against it and there as well and then if you look at the magnets they all look fine apart from that one and that's the one that's loose so the damage to that let's just show you how loose it is and it's cracked so that's just um, I'm a bit wary. Okay, so that is that has been rotating and rubbing on there. See those lines? And so it's been wearing through there these rotary lines. And it's actually started to wear through the insulation. I'm going to have to get really quite close in there to see what's going on with that one and whether or not the copper has been exposed so um, several layers of damage on this uh, stator over time I think maybe when it hit the ground the first time that magnet was shattered and so from there on, the magnet was always rubbing on the plastic, which couldn't have done a lot of good. And then of course it hit the ground again, later on. I think all the rest of the magnets are okay. So the last video showing removal of the magnet plate ended up being a bit of a monster about 45 minutes long it also included removing the stator i.e. the generator coils so I split it up so what, so what we're going to cover now is the remainder of that video showing removal of the coils which in this case was quite tricky So that was amazing wasn't it? You need a lot of heat to get that bearing fit to um, let go. A lot. Um, and this is one of the primary reasons why I did search this turbine out. Because until you see how it goes then you're always very tentative. Just have a look at the size of that shaft. So what is that? Just a little under two inches. It's quite warm. And a massive key. Absolutely massive. As wide as my little finger. So those people with proven turbines who want to do something with their generators, there you go, that's how to do it. Well, that's a good start. Speaking of which, a big thank you to Ian Helmsley, um, he's a Patreon um, subscriber, whatever you want to call it, came in in December and he's got a channel with um, Fred, which is a, a vintage car, uh, which is interesting, seeing it running, trying to get it started, that sort of thing. But thank you very much Ian. So there's a load of bolts around here, they look about 10 mil, but it takes 13 mil socket to uh, undo them. 
so there's loads of them must be eight so we'll switch you off until we get there so now we've got this uh, all those bolts on Don let's see if we can get this generator coils out we know they're toast so we don't have to be too gentle with it let's just just see I think a tap just a gentle tap <coughs> See, this is a, this is another thing. You want to get your generator coils out. How do you do it? I mean, it's all right. This one's busted, but it's obviously tight in here. So, how on earth do you get those out? Hey, do you have to put little wedges in there? I can't see any holes to uh, try and push it out. There's these lugs here, so um, maybe little wedges. I'll go and cut some wooden wedges. Well, I've cut some little wooden wedges out of some sweet chestnut. Huh. So, you know, you get this far. And you're still stuck. How do you get the magnet, uh, the generator plate out? Maybe it's expanded because of this damage here. Maybe. Right, let's see if we can get one down in there. Okay. They look very regular. That one doesn't though. Right. Okay. We can't do the wedges in there because there's something there. And I suspect there'll be something there as well like a step so we can't put any wedges on the outside so let's see if we can put some wedges on the inside Right, ten minutes later. Let's try from the uh, the bottom. There's a nasty split all the way through there. Okay, I've turned it over. And look there. There's a housing there with a knot in the back. And there's another one there. So I figure we'll tighten those up and see if they are extractors for the rotor. I'll tighten those up and then roll the 
whole thing over and again and I think there's another one the other side that sort of makes sense so 13 mil well it's moving roller over yeah. apparently there isn't another one So, brilliant theory, shame about the practice. Let's just keep going on these two then, and see what happens. Guarantee I'll drop this. Yep. Right, where's that lever? And that one's dropped out. Now, we don't want anything popping back in there. So let's stick a stake in there. Because it doesn't help it being just sat on the deck for three years, or two years, or whatever it was. I suspect it might be nearer three. heavy rotor and I wonder if that's a shim so it shims between there and there is that a shim let's just drive a wedge through there and see Several shims. Okay, so there are some shims on there, that boss there, and the distance between the two magnet plates is dictated by those shims between the boss on that magnet plate, where are we, and the boss on that magnet plate. So the two magnet plates are held apart at set distance. So, 
how do you set it all up? Difficult. We need some more investigation. And this is quite difficult because the bearing housing behind that is cracked. So what holds the wind shaft where it is? And how do you set up the the generator coils so there's an equal distance between the back magnets and the generator coil and the front magnets and the generator coil. We've got those two nuts which we've used as an extractor which could possibly um, make some fine adjustment but only only to the tip of the uh, or the angle of the generator coils so how do you set this up or is it smoke and mirrors anyway I think we've learnt enough for today we've got the generator coil out and it seems like you've got to use those two nuts to push the coil out of that casing and that might not be the case if you've got an undamaged coil and to get the rear magnet plate off you need a puller a strong puller and plenty of heat like a lot and then a bit more and a bit more too to get that uh, bearing fit to loosen off because it's a big surface area that it's grabbing hold of so I suspect if I want to take that magnet plate off that's going to be even more difficult perhaps maybe maybe not any comments you've got any information you've got about this much appreciated I think um, uh, this is territory unknown for me and whilst we're here let's just have a look at the other side of this stator and at close inspection it looks not too bad until you get round to here there's a big crack there and a big bulge there let's just uh, get a slightly different so there's this crack here and there's that that's swollen up there cracked across there and it's cracked across there now you know you might be able to run a grinder on there and just lift this off because this might be it sort of looks like it's just a sheet on this side and the encapsulation is poured from the other side because there's a, a line around there can't really tell but you'd be able to smooth that off so some people were saying can you not save this for something else it's entirely possible but we need to do more investigation and also do a resistance test etc but we've definitely got one magnet that is duff split you could maybe clean all that lot out and glue it back together it won't be as strong but you know it it would work two major disasters separated by time but this must have been quite a noisy thing if that magnet's been rubbing against the other side of this stator for all that time it couldn't have run smoothly and it probably wouldn't have started quite so easily difficult cheers for now uh, if you have not subscribed please do so because there's lots more coming up